everybody and welcome to Slice where we explore creative kitchen hacks and solve all of your home cooking dilemmas. I'm your host Yvette Rios and this week Hello. we are joined <laughs> by one of my dearest friends, food and lifestyle expert Alejandra Ramos. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so excited to be here. I know. Well, we really dolled ourselves up today. I, I know. Say. We did. Well, we have to because it's party time. It is. It's summertime and that is always party time. It's always party time in the summer. Okay, so each week on Slice, we invite you to submit your questions. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get to these questions, yes. right? Let's take a look at this week's kitchen conundrum. Ooh. What are some ways that I can spice up my summer barbecue? Okay, how can I spice up my summer barbecue? Mm. I can only think of one person <laughs> to help spice up just about any barbecue, and it's Alejandra. So I what love you got? to add a little spice to everything, basically. Clearly. <laughs> Okay, so what we're gonna start off with is a pineapple salsa, Ooh. but I'm going full kitschy, and I'm gonna serve it up in a pineapple bowl. No way! Yes! Oh yes. my gosh, yes. that's awesome! And I've seen that at like on cruise ships and things like that where they use the fruit as the bowl, but that seems really hard. No, it's actually not that hard. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So okay. we're gonna need two pineapples, that's one. Fabulous. And then we've got two. So Great. what you want to do is, for the one that serves as a bowl, you want something that's a little bit shorter, a little bit chubbier, right? okay. a little bit rounder, because okay. that's going to be a bowl. Got it. So this is going to be decorative. So what you want to do is you want to cut one third of it off, OK? But the trick is to make sure that this gorgeous crown stays on. OK. So you kind of want to hit it from the side. Oh my gosh. Let's see if we can go here. We see what I'm doing. Yes. Get from the side there. OK. And it's basically, it's like you're cutting off a lid. OK. So just go straight down. Oh, there you go. Okay. Ooh, there we go. And All now right. we have the beginning of our bowl. How nice I is that? I see. So you're going to leave it with gonna, the... Oh, yeah. You mm -hmm. want it to be nice and yes. wild. And so for scooping it out, okay. I like to take a little paring knife and just sort of cut along the sides. The only thing is you want to make sure that you don't go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, why is that? Because you want it to be able to hold all that juice and all the, all I the good see, stuff. so don't make it too flimsy at the bottom exactly. because it's just gonna, mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really wasn't sure where you were going because I was like, a bowl? I thought you'd cut it here and scoop it out. Oh, no, 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 this is gonna be a sideways bowl. This is way cooler. All right, and so there's so many ways to do this. I'll show you what I like to do. So my secret is just to use an ice cream scoop. Clever, clever yes, girl. Yes, these things. They're so useful for everything. I use them, like ice cream is the last thing I use ice cream scoops for. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, yes. So you just use this and you wanna dig in there and just kind of pull it out. Okay, cool. Yeah, and honestly, this, the riper that it is, the easier it's gonna come out. For sure. And pineapples actually make a great facial mask because I've done that That's before. That's true, actually you could totally use this for that. That's a very good then thing you don't to have to do worry about while the, the you're pour. Perfect. I know, you can prepare for your party with a salsa on your face. <laughs> And in your bowl. <laughs> Whip up. All right. All right, so here we go. So now we have our nice little salsa bowl. Perfect. This is look gorgeous. We're just gonna fill it up. So it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. have to be perfect. Exactly. This is gonna be beautiful. All right, so Stay now right we're gonna make pineapple salsa. Okay. And this is almost like a pineapple pico de gallo. Ooh. So it's really just gonna be such simple ingredients. We're using a red onion. Okay. It, it actually goes with your dress. You could just pin it right on the side. I literally picked this dress. <laughs> it makes it feel like a red onion. <laughs> So you just want to kind of dice it up really nice. Love it. It's going to get nice and small. So and pico de gallo you mentioned typically is tomato. Tomato, onions, onions jalapeno. Jalapeno. Uh, so we're pretty much cilantro. just kind of, and cilantro. So we're pretty much just kind of swapping in the pineapple. Got it. And Keeping pico it. de gallo is just salsa, essentially. Exactly. It's, okay, so Quick tell one. me about chilies. So All you've right, got a yes. jalapeno here. Chile is just a type of pepper, right? Yes. Now, could you use like a serrano pepper? Could you use, if you wanted more heat, what do you prefer? Yeah, so if you want more heat, a habanero is good. Um, but those are, I mean, that's a oh, lot yeah. of heat. I like jalapeno. I think it's a nice accessible amount of heat. Yes. It's good for a party. So with this, you want to be careful to not touch those seeds. OK, got it. And I'm keeping it really small. Typically, you could do this with gloves. OK. Right. Oh my gosh, I've done this and then been like, oh, the, yeah. they're, they're coming over. I gotta put my contacts in. Don't do that. Bad idea. Oh, bad idea, yeah. Bad idea. Honestly, another fun thing you can do, if you like smoking flavors, Ooh. you can use a canned chipotle instead yes. of the jalapeno. Ooh. Same recipe, and it just gives it a nice smoky twist. So let's add a little bit of our, let's chop up our cilantro. Okay. So this again is to taste. I love cilantro, so I tend to go big with it. I do too, but some people, they, it really freaks them out. You know what? They can't be my friend. So here's what I do. I like using the stems You also. do not. Yes, because there's flavor. There's <gasps> such great flavor in here. So that's why I just kind of bunch it all up like this. 
okay, my mind is officially blown right yeah. now. Because and then how many times them. have you been like, oh, and just cut the, the little leaves. leaves? No, no. My thing with herbs is if, taste it, right? Yes. Taste the stem. If the stem has flavor, use it. If it doesn't have flavor, toss it. Got it, okay. I love this. So, and then I just go right through it. Oh my gosh, this makes your herbs go so much further. Oh yeah, totally. Such a good idea. And you're dicing it up really small, so you can't really tell the leaf from no. the stem. Oh, or from, you know, anything else that's in that bowl. Hey, all right. That's okay. it. That's it. Super duper easy. It goes right in there. It smells so good. It smells so nice, right? It's, it's like so fresh. Yes. So amazing. It smells okay. so fresh. So okay. let's get let's do our pineapple now. Okay. So we've got our other pineapple. Now Perfect. This is our cooking pineapple. This, this is the one. This is the one we're gonna use. The chosen one. So again, you wanna get a nice ripe pineapple. You wanna make sure that the crown is firmly on. You wanna Smell it, and it should smell tropical and pineapple -y. Ooh. The, the longer that it sits, the juicier and better that it is. Got and it. So we're gonna just cut this head off right here. Then I just go along the sides. You kind of want to cut sort of in the like the shape of the pineapple. Yes. So if the pineapple is a little bit rounded. Cut around there like that. Okay, cool. And any tricks to not like lose because you sometimes waste a lot if you. Yes. So it's just kind of try to stay as close as you can so that. These little brown bits, you want them to go. Okay. But not much more than that. So okay, just got see it. where they are yep. and then judge from there. Got it. And now these, don't throw them out because these you can dump in a pitcher of water with ice and get really nice pineapple y spa water. Don't throw anything You're away. So good. I just love be a food this. <laughs> okay. All right. And so then now here, we're just going to cut around. Okay, the center part. Yes. And okay. you want to do about a half inch dice with this. So you're doing it pretty small because you don't want the chip to just kind of fall apart exactly. when you put the chip yeah. on there. Yeah. All right. So okay. I think perfect. We're pretty good here. Great. So now all this can go into our bowl. Fantastic. So do this. So while I do this, if you want to grab a lime, yes, and just you know give it a nice roll and squeeze, oh, yeah. a good massage, That's get true. all that juice going, get those chakras aligned, <laughs> <laughs> and then we can cut that one. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. There you go. Fantastic. And then why lime? Like what? What's what do you think is so important about how, putting lime in here? So I think lime, the acid is gonna break down the uh, like the onions. It's gonna kind of sort of bring all these flavors together. That smells so good. So good, right? Yes. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna season it. So the salt, again, um, just gonna throw it over there. The salt's gonna pull the liquid out of that pineapple and out of the onions and out of the, all the herbs and stuff. And it's gonna help bring everything together. So now we can just give this a nice mix. Love it. And look how beautiful these colors look that together. That is so beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. It smells like that summer. Yes. This is like the perfect salsa for any summer this is So, so good. So and good. And so I recommend making this at least an hour in advance because you want to give it a little time to sit there and for all these flavors, just kind of get to know each other, mix yes. and mingle in the bowl. They're going to be You BFFs. want some couples to form. Like you want a <laughs> love connection happening in this bowl, right? So we can put this in. That you looks can so beautiful. Fill it up. And then you can keep the extra in the fridge and just refresh the bowl throughout the party. I love it. We've got our tortilla chips and our plantain chips. So we Perfect. can just put those all along the side of the platter. Yes. And that's it, you've got it. I love this. There you go. Ta-da! Salsa in a pineapple. <laughs> so you've got a drink for us as well. I do, you need a great drink for a great party. Oh my so gosh, you're always full of surprises. We are gonna do a watermelon mojito. Hey. So again, it's that idea of starting with a classic. So everybody loves a mojito, which is typically just rum, mint, and lime. Yep. So we're just gonna add some watermelon. I love Love this idea. So simple. So, so simple. simple. Easy. Okay, so when you're picking a watermelon, how do you know which is the right one to pick? All right, so you want something that feels heavy for its size. So you pick it up and you're like, oh, I didn't realize it was gonna be that heavy. That's a good juicy watermelon. Um, that's the case for any kind of melon, actually. And then you want it to be pretty evenly covered. There will be one kind of pale spot, which is good because that's where it was growing. So you want to just kind of cut it down the center. Okay. So. And you need a nice sharp knife for this, yes. for sure. So. As you know, with Perfect. your, yeah, so you make it flat, because then that makes it easier to cut. Yes. And if you actually want to take one half of that yeah. one. Here, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll cut it the big part. Perfect. Yeah. And then just use this, cut out the chunks. So this doesn't have to be nice. You want just some big chunks in there. Okay. Because um, we're going to put this in the blender. This is all going to go in the blender, so it oh, doesn't matter. Oh, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, yeah, so just kind of get it all out. And the trick here, because what I do is I save Step by using a sieve. Ah. And then this can go right through the sieve into our pitcher that we're going to be serving it in. Terrific. 
And that just gets out all the seeds, all the pulp. Gets out any kind of that fiber. So now we can just juice our limes right into here. Okay, I can do that if you do the next step. All right. We are also gonna cut a few little lime wedges because I like to do the mix of just the fresh juice, but a little bit of the lime because the natural oils in the lime add a little touch of bitterness and just a lot of fragrance to the drink. That's what makes a mojito, like a classic mojito, so good. But you know what I will say, good drink. tip, good tip about this, which I um, learned, is if you do make, let's say, a sangria and you are putting lime in there, yeah. you really want to take it out after a certain amount of time. Because oh, it yeah. does make it very bitter. Yeah, but honestly, I feel like this is not going to sit as long as... Yeah, oh no. No, no this not is... with you around a bit. <laughs> Okay, and so I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar to it. So this is turbinado sugar, it's also it's like raw sugar. I like it because it's nice and gritty and it has a little bit of that natural molasses taste. Love that. So that is going to be delicious in there. That and again, you can adjust the amount that you add depending on how juicy or how, uh, how sweet your watermelon is. Okay, now, and then and you're just putting it to taste. You just kind of yes. threw some in there. Exactly. Willy-nilly, as they say. Yeah, and I'm just dropping these little lime wedges in there. Okay, so now we're going to add our rum. I love this. For this recipe, you want to use a white rum, a light gold rum will work too. What you don't want is a spice rum. Oh yeah, that's gonna add a lot of flavor that you don't really need. That's, yeah, you don't need that in there. No. Agreed. Okay, so I'm putting in about 30 uh, mint leaves in there. I'm gonna and make sure that you put 30. 30, count okay, them. Two. Count them. And if they're large ones, you wanna just uh, tear them up a little bit by hand. If they're small, you can throw them in whole. Okay, and I see you're kind of massaging them too. Yes, as I do it, you kind of want to, actually, it's typically, it's actually called smacking, so then you just put it there. You slap it, you slap the oils you, you're out. You're very good at that. <laughs> and a little trick that I like to do when I make big cocktails like this, a little pinch of salt. Shut it down. It balances out the, Are you the sugars in there. <gasps> yeah. That's your secret. My secreto. Oh, I know, it's a scandal on TV over here. All right, and so okay. now, here's another trick. I like to, I know sometimes people put the ice right into the pitcher. Yes. I don't like to do that because it melts and it dilutes the drink, and we don't want that. No, it's true, especially in the that. summertime. So what you want is to make your drink in a pitcher or a punch bowl, whatever, and then have some ice separate available for your guests. They can put it in their cup. I love it. And I'm gonna touch your ice. I hope you're no, okay with that. No, please touch my ice. We're very close, so. We are. All right, and now we can just pour that right okay, over. Okay, perfect. Ooh, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, and then we need to dress this up a little bit more, right? A little bit more? Yeah, just put a little, a little wow, more shana Look at this, I love this. <laughs> okay, salute. salute. Here we go. Mm. Ooh, oh, that's yes. so nice. Yes, party. Summer in a glass. I love it. Okay, but now we need to try it with our salsa. Yeah, let's, let's go it. check it out. So tell me what you do. How do you dress this okay, up? Okay, so what I like to do is I like to put whatever you're going to serve with it. So whether that's uh, tortilla chips Ooh. or plantain chips, just kind of drop them all along the side. I love you that. You can do some fresh veggies here too. You can do, um, if you have a little room, you can even add some more fresh herbs just to kind of dress it up. You do, you do love a garnish. I do love a garnish. <laughs> that looks amazing. Let's try it. Okay. <laughs> no, all right. I'm going to try one of these. I'm going with these. Me plantain too. Chip. Why not? Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I know I made this, but it's pretty great. Oh, there's like a party in your mouth. Party in my mouth. The sweetness and the cheers. onion. Yeah. Okay, cheers. Well, don't drink too much because I want to play mm -hmm. a game with you. You ready to play a game? I am always ready for a game. I know, I know you like a game. Okay, so this game is called Fire. Fire. Or like Fail. Us. Fire, right here, or Fail. Not us. Not us, exactly, Not us. basically. So we're gonna try something very special, a okay. culinary trend, and you're gonna decide whether it's fire. I love a trend. Or it's a fail. Yeah. Okay, here we okay. go, let's go. I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? I am, I am ready. So in front of us, we have a culinary trend that we're both gonna try and decide. Okay. Whether or not it's fire or it's or, a fail. Or fail. Okay, what do you think it is? Year, obviously, right? Well, it's like a beer in that it's a beverage. I'm getting worried that Rios. Well, you may want to just it? stir it up a little bit. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Anything that requires stirring is a little bit dangerous. <laughs> okay, so what is this? Okay, no, wait, we just first it's, try. Wait. Take a sniff. Wait, why does oh, this smell? Oh, yeah. Why does this smell like chicken? <laughs> it, oh, it, it I thought we were chicken. friends. <laughs> I thought we were friends. It has a chickeny smell. It does. Oh, God, it's in. Oh, oh, buddy. <laughs> Oh, dear friend. 
Why what have you served me a glass of cold soup that? <laughs> It's not even good, it's not like gazpacho. What is this? Okay, so this is bone broth. Oh, good. Bone broth is sweeping the nation. Okay. We all know how healthy it is, it right? Is. Yes. And so now there are bone broth smoothies. Okay, so what do you think? This is what I think. <laughs> I'm not in love with this. Okay, <laughs> clearly it's, a fi it's fire for you, right? It is fire <laughs> in that it is not fire. It is, <laughs> it is fire as in my house is on fire. <laughs> And that is a fail. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I will say that the bone broth smoothie, the flavor isn't bad. The flavor's not bad, it just smells like chicken. Yes, like, the, this, the aroma is, is not great. Yeah, I don't want to drink chicken. No, ever. I would say it's a fail. Okay, so I apologize about ending on this note <laughs> because we were at a really big high right. an hour. But thank you so much, Alejandro yes. Ramos, for being the most fabulous guest thank ever. Thank you so much. I'm gonna just leave that with you. Please. Double, you. double chicken it, juice. We'll put it right over here. <laughs> Okay, so this is one of my favorite parts of the show. This is where we talk about how to slice something different every episode, and today, I'm gonna show you guys how to slice garlic. Now, there's a couple ways you can get them out of the little husk that they have. You can use a chef's knife like this, and you're gonna keep the handle off the cutting board and keep the blade away from you and just pound down. That's one way to do it. And then you can peel the husk off like this, which is great and a very traditional way to peel garlic. But another way that you can do it is you take these cloves of garlic and you put them in water for about three to four hours and then check this out. They come out just like that. Once you've got the garlic out like that, I like to use a paring knife and cut off the tip like this. And then you can just slice them like this and then straight down to mince it into a, a nice thin slice. And so there you go. Make sure to leave a comment below on this episode and always try to tag me. I'm at Yvette Rios. And of course, tune in next week on Tuesdays at 5 for a very new episode of Slice.